Got in late last night, got the booth set up, and then uh, I rested a long time. I got up at my normal time, which is the crack of noon, and got a shower, got a cup of coffee, and I'm working on my presentation to make sure everything's uh, included, nothing's been forgotten. You know, last night the bar was filled up with people drinking, ordering in pizzas on top of the food you already get in the restaurant, which is crazy. Uh, at first our waitress said, you can't eat those in here, take them out. And we said they was handed to us. We didn't order it. We would never do that. And then four minutes later, because the guy brought in like 30 pizzas, she says, you can just eat your pizza. <laughs> so, and Magna hasn't even started yet. And it's getting a little bit crazy. Ah, I'm just going to keep recording these clips and then I'm going to build them all into one video. And hopefully it, these jumps from time to time will add up into a, an interesting story. Thursday night was a VIP party that was sponsored by Live Aquaria, and it was a bar that had a bowling alley built in. So we all had a chance to throw a few balls, knock down some pins, and eat some nice snacks, including a peppermint angelfish. That's right, I ate one. My buddy Jason Langer makes these beautiful fish, and they do taste delicious. My score wasn't great, but there were shenanigans that night, and there was alcohol involved too, so haha. <laughs> what can I tell you? We did have a lot of fun. Friday morning, and it is time to begin actually enjoying Macna. In previous Macnas, the vendor hall often sells out and people have to go to a separate room to see the rest of the vendors. But in this case, we were all gathered together in one giant room, which worked out beautifully. All right, tell us what you got in your hand there. Uh, I've got a, basically something that's TSA approved <laughs> to where you're able to take your acros back with you or any other frags. And the cool thing is it's got all the different markings here telling us all the different milliliters and everything. Okay. Throw in some bear when you get home, Yeah. spin it around. And it's got a lid? Yeah, it's got an airtight lid. It, they give you all the paperwork for TSA to say that it's approved. That's cool. It's a win-win. Sanjay and I, we saw it yesterday and we were like, oh. How much did it cost? Uh, 20, $23, I think. It's not bad. $23, $25. So the, whole, the hardest part is keeping it at the right temperature though, right? While oh, you're yeah, traveling? Definitely, definitely. So you're going to put in a little cooler? A little cooler and it's going to be on my carry-on, so just going straight home with it. And you know TSA has that whole rule of three ounces, so. It, but if if it's a live creature, a, a fish, or anything else, it can go over as long as you uh, educate the TSA. So we had to put agent. one clownfish in there. Exactly. <laughs> Great minds think alike. That's exactly what I'm thinking. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> That's awesome. Does that work for reference size? It does. Yeah. See. <laughs> we have to discuss this tank next. This was one of the major highlights for me at this year's Macna. These are all juvenile angelfish that were tank raised by Matthew Wittenridge, part of Poma Labs, and he's gonna do an interview with me in a couple of minutes. But look at how small these fish are. This is the stuff that makes my heart so warm. I love tiny little fish. I talk about it all the time because we get to watch them grow in. Great strides have been made in marine breeding over the last few years, and this is a huge milestone. So let's hear what Matt had to say. We are talking to Matt Wittenrich while you guys are looking at this tank. And if you notice, these fish are itty bitty. Here's a finger for reference. <laughs> We've got three different species in here. What are they, Matt? So the, the, the itty bitty ones are the, the Singapore angelfish. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites. They were a little bit small for the show, but we wanted to make sure that we had a, a pretty big debut at Mac to show some people. They are perfect um, for the show. I love them. But you know what's funny is every, that's everyone's favorite fish. Out of all the fish in there, even the conspicuous angels, those are what everybody loves. Now the um, conspicuous angels, which one? The one with the white stripe? Uh, the ones with the white stripe on their back. Yep, mm -hmm. those are the ugly, duck, uh, ugly duckling of the holy grail. They turn into a, a beautiful fish in the end. Yep. And then what's that one there with the blue stripe on his body? So that is a, a transitional blue line angel. So they will turn into uh, the fish that you know with fluorescent blue horizontal bands on it. Um, and when it was a juvenile, it was jet black with a bright yellow band. So it's somewhere in the middle right now. So this is what we're actually calling a bonded pair. So when, when these guys hit settlement, we isolate them in 20 gallon tanks. They are hermaphroditic, but this forces their social hierarchy. So one, the larger one turns into a male. The smaller one turns into a female, and you're guaranteed uh, a pair of angelfish that coexist together. Can you tell me what settlement means? Uh, settlement, sure. So it means from the time when these fish are swimming in the open ocean, developing in, in what they call larvae, and they don't resemble a fish. They're just this, usually they're clear, so they blend in with the open ocean and nothing eats them, until they turn into something that resembles a fish and what we know is a reef fish. So their pelagic larval duration ultimately ends when they return to the reef, 
and get color again and, and look like a real fish. Okay, so once it has colored, that's considered settling. Not that it's gotten to the point where it, I always, when I think settle, I think of putting down roots, right? And <laughs> right, so when I think yeah. putting down roots, I'm thinking, yeah. doesn't swim. Yeah. But these are fish, they have to swim. Right, yeah. It, so it usually... I don't understand the word settlement. So you're saying it went from yeah. that clear stage. Because in my last video I just shared, <laughs> I talked about, I don't understand how we have any clownfish in the ocean. Because when they make the eggs and when they spawn, yeah. all the other fish come to steal. You know, when oh, the fish sure, spawn yeah. in the open water, all the fish yeah. come to, How does anything live long enough to become a fish? Not much does, and that's the whole point. That's why aquaculture, you know, if you're good, it stands a chance to be better than nature. In, in the wild, less than 0.001% of the eggs that hatch actually survive back to make it to the reef, back to the reef. Not even to adulthood, just back to the reef. Um, so it's a pretty uh, pretty dangerous journey. Now all um, these fish in here right now are what age? Like the tiniest ones are how old and the bigger um, they, ones are They how range. Old? So, so what we're doing here, we're starting something new. So when you get the fish, you'll actually know the exact date it was hatched. Mm -hmm. So the conspicuous angelfish were hatched on April 18th. So they're just about five months old. Okay, and the they're blue, about an inch and a half long, I'd say? Yeah, yeah. The blue line angelfish were hatched on March 3rd. Okay. So a little bit older. And the Singapore angels, um, they're probably... <laughs> yeah, they look like it, right? So they're probably about three months old. Aww. <laughs> and when you have little tiny fish like this, are you feeding them all the time? Uh, well, that's the one thing about small fish like this is they don't have very large fat reserves, so they need to eat a lot. Okay. So these guys get fed at least four or five times a day. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's the coolest thing about what we're doing as well is everything is trained to eat uh, prepared foods. Like these guys don't leave the hatchery until they're eating uh, PE pellets and flakes. <laughs> me. Hello, everyone. And I want to ask you how many different species at this point do you think you've yeah, so, so to, it's, it's, I think it's reared, I think it's succeeded with. So today is the, the grand debut of, of Pomo Lab. So we're launching with nine species. Uh, we've had success with a few other ones, but we just have ones and twos of those, and we're just not ready to, for the world to see them. Um, but it's cool. So we have a fish for everyone. We have the conspicuous angelfish would be like the holy grail. But what's even cooler than that is that if there was a cooler fish than the conspic angel, would be a, a blue line crossed with a conspic angel. So it's just something that randomly had had or happened in the tank. So it's, it's a hybrid. Nice. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like yet. I, I like to think <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Fangs. Fangs and blue lines and yeah, super it's cool. And neither of those fish would be okay in a reef. They were literally a, a coral eater, right? Corellivore? Yeah. Um, traditionally, the fish have been warned you don't keep them in with corals because they eat coral. Now these guys raised in captivity. You know who knows? We're still we're really excited to get some feedback on that. Okay. They might eat corals. They might not. One might be good for a while, then wake up one day and want to eat your whole tank. So it, it's uh, I would say with caution. Okay. So. All right. All right. But you've done more than this is nine species here. But in your history of yeah for, for yeah salt water. i don't care about fresh <laughs> tell me about your salt water you did mandarins that's the where i got to know you from yeah the mandarins was a big one so i think altogether we've done like uh six species of dragon nuts so far okay. that's pretty cool i think altogether is probably over 80 species that i've done in, in some capacity species. so 80 i haven't done one <laughs> i'm that lazy <laughs> I, I was lucky i had some good jobs that allowed me to play yeah. with fish all day so all right thank you so much matt i really yeah thank it. you mark enjoy the show yeah cheers so i'm here with Mark Levinson from Me Loves Reef. And earlier today, we met a huge fan of Me Loves Reef YouTube channel. And I wanted to go introduce Mark, Me Love, to his biggest fan. And we're getting it on camera. So stay tuned, that's what we're gonna see, okay? I will admit, I was very curious to find out who my super fan was. And within a few steps, I discovered he was in the eShops booth. Hi. I don't, I don't think he remembers me, but last year I came out, I came out to him like a total nerd. Nerds and are good. And I'm, and I'm, I'm a big fan. And he's like, hey, creep. I'm a huge fan of Mark. Like, yeah. I never said, hey, creep. No, no, you didn't. No, but I felt like a creep. No, you're like the nicest guy. Well, oh, thank you. Awesome. I, I do my best. Absolutely. Are you guys going to do a quick little... Stuff, uh, yeah, we are going to do different stuff. I love your stuff. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. I know. Hi. Awesome. Wow, you. I, I, I owe you all $5. You. I got it. Yeah, yeah. I was telling the ladies, you're, you're, uh, you're, like, you're like my porn, because that's literally what I told them. No, I know. It's like, it's like you're like my porn, because I literally like lay there. Like, I'll be in bed, and I'll like get online, I'll go on your YouTube channel, like I'll watch, and I'll fall asleep, and like, you know. No, it's and not, dream of me. And dream of you. <laughs> and, and she doesn't know your story about your anemone that you were told that you were going to lose it you know, within two weeks that it was going right. to die off. Yeah, yeah. And then you went and you bought one, count them, one shrimp. Yep. And you took it home and you cut it. You need to, under, you need to understand the struggle this man has gone through. <laughs> you just don't understand. He went out. He went through, it's a struggle. So, yeah, it's, it's a... 
Yeah, I, I, I just I just love your channel. And everything. Oh, I appreciate so, that. Thank That's you. awesome. See, now I guess I'll have to keep doing this. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so for about eight or 12 minutes, Otto told me all about their current skimmer line as well as their brand new skimmer that's just come to market. He went into specific detail of exactly how the skimmer works from the bottom to the top. And while I wanted to paste that entire segment into this video, the video got really long. So I'm gonna release it separately on my Mila's Reef page on Facebook. Thanks for sharing it with us, Otto. And thank you for being a super fan. The button hunt was another fun event that happened this year where you got buttons from every vendor. This is kind of cool. If you look right here at this thing, right? That is measuring how quickly the water's moving through this pipe. And this is inch and a half diameter pipe. So we're finally able to measure for those bigger pumps and make sure that the flow is correct. This information is sent straight to the apex so you can keep up with the health of your pumps if they need to be cleaned or if they're running too slow. You could even set up notifications to let you know what's happening with the system. As I review the footage from MACNA, there's so many vendors I didn't get a chance to speak with, but I knew that other people are going to be filming it and sharing it on social media so I'd get caught up. And of course, these vendors do run ads about their products regularly. I've never run one of these skimmers, uh, but man, I sure like the look of them. I don't know why, I got a perfectly great skimmer. One MACNA pro tip I can give you is to literally go find the vendors you want to talk with specifically. If you have been using a HANA product and you want to talk with those guys about how it works, find them and spend some time learning more. This is a product that I missed last year. It's an automatic water change system that you hook up. It's by the same people that made the smart ATO. And for $250, it can do daily water changes automatically in the background. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video at this point. The final minutes are going to be from Mardi Gras World, where we all went on a tour of the facility. And then we had a really nice evening enjoying food and drink inside a nice ginormous outdoors but yet indoor reception area. My new favorite mixed drink is called a hurricane. Based on the footage I still have on my hard drive, it looks like there's at least two more parts to Macna. And I hope that you'll tune in for those. If you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. If you are subscribed, be sure you hit like. Comment below about the things you found interesting or let me know if there was something that you wished I'd covered. You guys, happy reefing, and I'll see you real soon. This huge workshop is an area where all the sculptures are carved out of sheets of foam that have been bonded together to create these different characters that we see. It would have been really awesome to watch the robotic arms go to town, but it was turned off when we were touring. Still, you can see some of the results of what they've done here, as well as all the beautiful sculptures that they've put on display in the main area.